Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 6C, where we're going to think about the simplest kind of personal genomics, really. It's just personal genetics, because it's only analyzing a single gene or a small set of genes. We'll talk about what kinds of things can be learned, what determines the availability of these tests, and the limitations and concerns that you should have about using such tests. So, this kind of analysis can answer really two kinds of questions. It can say, is a particular known mutation present? Do I have this mutation or mutations? And it can analyze particular genes and ask, is any mutation present in these genes? So why would you want to answer these questions? Well, they're done typically um, for one of three reasons. A person may have a medical condition, a syndrome, that has a genetics cause that's well known. Perhaps the normal causal mutation has been well studied, and the test would be used to say, is this particular mutation present in this gene or not? Another reason is the person may not themselves be exhibiting any symptoms of a disease, but they may have a relative who has a genetic condition, and they want to know what's the likelihood, whether or not they've inherited the gene that causes this condition or increases their risk of this condition. Um, again, here it's a test for particular mutations would be useful. Um, in some cases, the choice of treatment is going to depend on the genetic cause, and in that case, you might need to sequence the whole gene to find out where the mutation is to figure out what is the actual defect caused by the mutation. There's two ways, really, that this technology is done. The simpler way is if the mutations are known, it's possible to either use PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, which amplifies DNA, or a specially designed DNA typing chip of the type that we're going to discuss a couple of lectures from now. And these tests can be widely available, and they're not necessarily very expensive. If it's necessary to look for rare mutations or perhaps unknown mutations in particular genes, then it's necessary to sequence the, the alleles of those genes that the person has. And this technology is less widely available and quite expensive. The analysis is typically done by clinical genetics laboratories, um, and these are often associated with university hospitals. Um, often these hospitals will post online the kinds of tests that they do, and sometimes the costs as well. They're not available typically direct to the consumer. You cannot order such a test yourself. They have to be ordered by a healthcare professional, your physician or genetics counselor. And that's because there's concern that um, people who are not healthcare professionals may not have the background to be able to interpret the test correctly and take appropriate action. This is part of a larger debate on the extent to which um, the techniques of personal genomics should be available to ordinary people or should be controlled by healthcare professionals. These tests can also be quite expensive. Um, you might have noticed the number that I circled on the previous slide, $900 for a sequence-based test for osteogenesis imperfecta. Luckily, though, they may be covered by your health insurance, if you're lucky enough to have health insurance. There are concerns about using these tests, things you should think about before deciding to go ahead. One is you may just be taking a test because you're curious, but usually a physician will order the test because knowing the results of the test will change the outcome in some way. Um, maybe it's possible to prevent or to reduce the effects of bad alleles that you might have. Maybe the results will change therapy. Maybe they just allow the person to better plan for the rest of their life or change their behavior in some ways. Um, do you really want to know this information? And more importantly, do family members want to know this information? Because when you get this test done, 
you're directly finding out about yourself, but indirectly, you're getting information about the alleles that were present in your parents, alleles you may share with siblings, or with more distant relatives, aunts and uncles and cousins. And they may or may not want to have this information. Finally, what will you do if the results are inconclusive? Especially if um, either the um, allele-based test does not find a well-known allele, or even if DNA sequencing doesn't find any mutations in the genes that are tested, what will you do then? So what we've done, we've talked about when simple DNA-based tests are valuable. They're valuable if you have a candidate gene or mutation, a particular place to focus your attention, and they're mostly used for patients who are at high risk of particular genetic defects or known to have genetically specified diseases. They're not direct to consumer, they must be ordered by a physician, and consequently they're quite expensive, but your insurance may cover them. And it's important to think about the consequences of the results of the test before you get the test done, because once you have that knowledge, you can't go backwards. Coming up next, we're going to think about several examples of the kinds of tests of this type. I hope to see you there.